the largest Soviet wheel tractor. How was this giant created? Why was the leader of the USSR, Nikita Khrushchev, the one who initiated its creation? And what does the USA have to do with it? You'll also find out why this model was called the Big Yellow Killer. Let's dive together into the fascinating story of a true tractor legend, which was meant to spark a revolution in Soviet agriculture and help catch up with and surpass the USA. Hey, subscribers! Today I'm going to tell you about this yellow Soviet giant, the K700. So leave your comments, subscribe, and enjoy watching. July 1962. A noisy crowd gathered in the fields of one of the local state farms near Leningrad, now known as St. Petersburg. There were both residents of the nearby villages and workers from the Kirov tractor plant. After all, it was at that time that the first field tests of a new, never-before-seen wheel tractor with an articulated frame, something unusual for the USSR, were taking place. Everyone was simply amazed as they watched the huge yellow machine, swing from side to side and wrapped in a cocoon of dust, pulling a multi-furrow plow behind it. For the local residents, only the arrival of aliens could have overshadowed such a spectacular and resonant sight. And indeed, the tractor could have seemed like some kind of extraterrestrial creation with its impressive size and unusual design, where every turn of the steering will cause the frame to bend one way or the other. Many of those present even thought that the new machine had simply broken down, since they had never seen anything like it before. By the late 1950s, the tractor fleet of the USSR was both technically and morally outdated. Everything produced by the giant tractor factories in Stalingrad, Kharkiv, or Leningrad was, in fact, an echo of the distant industrialization of the 1930s, which took place with the technical and financial support of the United States. By the end of the 1950s, the main tractor working the collective farm fields was the DT-54 crawler model, which was based on the pre-war SXD Zinati crawler tractors. As for the wheeled models, the situation was even more dismal. The thing is, in the militarized Soviet Union, tractors had a dual purpose. They not only served an agricultural function, but in times of war, they were converted into towing vehicles for various types of artillery. That's why, since the mid-1930s, the Soviet Union focused on producing track tractors, as they had better off-road capability and traction, exactly what the military required from their equipment. As for wheeled tractors, they played a supporting role and were produced in small numbers. Their model range was more than modest. At the beginning of the 1950s, the Vladimir tractor plant was still producing a true tractor dinosaur. The universal model was equipped with iron wheels and was actually a copy of the American Farmal Regular Tractor, which had been developed by the American company International Harvester back in 1924. Later, in the early 1930s, the license to produce this tractor was sold to the Soviet Union. The lineup of wheeled tractors can also be expanded with small models from the Kharkiv tractor plant, such as the DT-14 and DT-20, as well as the medium-sized wheeled tractors from the Minsk tractor plant, the NTZ-2 and MPZ-5. And that's the entire range of wheeled tractors in the USSR. But everything changed after the official visit of the head of the USSR government, Nikita Khrushchev, to the United States of America, which took place from September 15 to 27, 1959. This was the first official trip of a Soviet leader to the United States. It became possible thanks to the warming of bilateral relations between the countries after the death of Joseph Stalin. During his multi-day visit, Nikita Khrushchev visited New York, California, and Iowa, where he met with the staff of many factories and plants, and attended various exhibitions. The General Secretary was especially impressed by the vast fields of Iowa planted with corn. But what stuck with him the most were the large John Deere wheel tractors with articulated frames, which were being used by one of the farmers whose farm Khrushchev visited. They amazed him with their power and maneuverability. There was nothing like that in the USSR at the time. Khrushchev returned from the American continent with a wild idea to plant more fields with corn and, at any cost, to build his own tractor similar to the John Deere, one that would be more effective for developing virgin lands and would allow collective farms to catch up with and surpass America in the production of grain, milk, butter, and meat. 
The task of developing such machinery was assigned to the design bureau of the Leningrad tractor plant. There were also plans to purchase a ready-made sample of the John Deere 8010 Goliath from the USA, which was the world's first tractor with an articulated frame. However, due to the deterioration of relations with the United States after the incident involving the American U-2 spy plane shot down over Soviet territory on May 1, 1960, purchasing such equipment from the U.S. seemed inappropriate. Therefore, it was decided to take a different approach. In Sweden, they managed to purchase the Canadian Wagner W-14 tractor, which had similar characteristics to the Deer. It was this model that became the basis for the future Soviet tractor. The first K-700 tractor was built on July 13, 1962. It became a dual-purpose product. In wartime conditions, the tractor was supposed to serve as a hauler for powerful artillery systems. In addition to its letter and number designation, the tractor also received its own name, Karavets. For another seven years, the K-700 underwent various tests and refinements, and only in 1969 did the tractor go into mass production. The Kirovets became the first Soviet wheel tractor of the 5th traction class, designed for working heavy soil over large areas, using wide-coverage agricultural implements such as cultivators, plows, and disc harrows. The Kirovets was a universal machine and, in addition to agricultural work, it was also used in industry, road construction, and forestry. The K700 was built on two half-frames, which were connected to each other by a hinge. The half-frames moved relative to each other in two planes, vertically when following the contours of uneven terrain, and horizontally when turning. The front half-frame housed the engine, gearbox, cab, and fuel tank, while the rear one contained the permanently driven axle and the hitch mechanism. The tractor's engine is a diesel, 8-cylinder UMZ 238ND with a power output of 215 horsepower. The gearbox is a 16-speed, with four ranges and four speeds in each range. Shifting gears within the same range is hydraulic, while shifting between ranges is mechanical. The tractor's maximum transport speed reached up to 21 miles per hour. The front axle suspension is spring-based, while the rear uses a bogey suspension. On tractor bulldozers and loaders, the rear axle suspension is rigid. The braking system on the first tractors was pneumatic hydraulic, while on later models it was only pneumatic. The Caravette's cab is all-metal, two-seater, with a large glass area that provided excellent panoramic visibility. The front and rear parts of the cab are symmetrical, which made it equally convenient to drive both forward and backward. This was especially important for loader tractors. The large size of the cab, along with a heater and sufficient dust and noise insulation, provided a decent level of comfort for work. When attaching the cab to the frame, special rubber pads were used to reduce vibration levels. The K700 was a true heavyweight, handling the toughest jobs and doing so on a scale that no other tractor could match. In just one hour, the Karabets could plow an area of five acres, and it did this at a speed of six miles per hour. The fuel tank, with a capacity of 118 gallons, gave the tractor good autonomy when working in areas far from refueling stations. During an hour of heavy field work, the Karabets consumed 13 gallons of diesel fuel. The 700 had impressive dimensions, a length of 23 feet 9 inches, a width of 8 feet 4 inches, and a height of 10 feet 7 inches. The tractor's weight was 11 tons. The tractor could be equipped with a wide range of mounted, semi-mounted, and towed implements. The K700 was equipped with a three-point hitch system with hydraulic drive. Because of the distinctive shape of its sloped hood, the first Caravettes earned the nickname Hunchback. The tractor was designed for developing the heavy virgin lands of the step zone. However, most agronomists considered the K700 too heavy for field work. Where the Caravettes passes through, they said, nothing will grow there for three years. To reduce the specific pressure on the soil, it was necessary to use dual wheels. But overall, in a country that possessed the largest area of arable land in the world, such a tractor was in extremely high demand. In 1964, the factory assembled 1,200 K700s. In 1975, the 100,000 tractor rolled off the assembly line. 
That same year, a new generation replaced the K700A the K700 with an 8-cylinder UMZ 238 engine producing 235 horsepower, and the K701 with a 12-cylinder UMZ 240B engine, which, with a displacement of 22.5 liters, delivered 300 horsepower. Both tractors were standardized with each other and were radically different from the previous model. The shape of the cab and the hood changed, the hood became straight. The single large tank mounted behind the cab was replaced with two smaller tanks, each with a capacity of 84 and a half gallons. The tanks were mounted on both sides of the frame below the cab and, in terms of shape, blended seamlessly with the tractor's front fenders. This model was equipped with larger diameter wheels, which, with the rigid suspension on both axles, served as shock absorbers. The new generation of Caravats is not just a tractor for agricultural work, but also a universal platform on which various equipment could be installed to perform a wide range of tasks in construction, industry, forestry, and road work. Here are the most common special modifications of the Caravats. The K702 is an industrial tractor that was used as a base for loaders, bulldozers, and scrapers. This modification features a rigid suspension and a hydromechanical transmission. The K703 is a modification with a reversible control station, which allows the driver to operate the tractor just as comfortably whether moving forward or in reverse. The K703MT is a three-axle articulated dump truck with a load capacity of 18 tons. In the mid-80s, a new modernized version of the Carabets was released with the Index K701M, which was equipped with a UMZ8423 engine that, with a displacement of 17 liters, produced 300 horsepower. Despite all its advantages such as high power, reliability, and versatility, the Caravettes also had certain drawbacks. The high center of gravity made it difficult to operate the tractor in hilly terrain. There were cases when, due to a damaged front wheel, the tractor would tip over and, with its entire 14-ton mass, literally crush the not strong enough cab, putting the operator's life at risk. Another drawback was the long hood, which significantly limited the view in front of the tractor. But at that time, people didn't pay attention to the drawbacks and made full use of the power and versatility of this yellow giant. Due to non-compliance with modern safety standards, an insufficiently sturdy cab, and intense global competition in the agricultural machinery sector, production of the K700A and K701 tractors was discontinued in 2002. In total, over 400,000 tractors were produced during the manufacturing period. Today, most of these tractors have been retired from service due to not needing modern technical standards and excessive fuel consumption per unit of power. The Yellow Giant Caravettes has ultimately become a part of the history of that country, which never managed to catch up with or surpass America in providing its citizens with the most essential benefits.